markets. Um, Futureneers is a company that works with uh, future leader pioneers or what we're trying to create our future leaders. So you would have heard people mention that very early on in your career, you might not be thinking of becoming or even, you know, you want to get into the business as a graduate or as somebody starting off at entry level within a company. But it's very important to be setting the scene around building skill sets and becoming more self-aware around what you can bring to an organization. So we very much focus in on the future element of your potential in that regard. So just to give you an idea, we're developing today's young talent into tomorrow's leaders. Now the word young doesn't necessarily mean that your age is young. You can be starting in a business at a later age as a graduate, but being young in, your, in, in that career element of what you're actually working towards. So what we do is we work with brave and bold leaders who are trying to create courageous and compassionate workplaces. The reason why we have that as our mission statement is really because it's not just about your skill set that you bring to an organization. You have to think of the emotional impact that you bring to an organization as well, your emotional intelligence and your emotional qualifications in that regard as well. Long gone are the days where it was just about going in and getting a paycheck and going home again. There's so much more in terms of work-life integration. We don't even call it work-life balance anymore because it's all intertwined and we want to make sure that we're living our best day every day. And this so far, come on in, take a seat. So that's what we're looking to do and we work with the, we also work with education campuses in that regard as well trying to bring a, a different lens into which we can develop our future talents as well because you probably are aware that when you qualify with a great with your qualification and you, you, it's not just that you can go in and say I have my degree or I have my masters or my diploma give me a job it doesn't work like that you have to sell yourself the previous speaker would have been talking about interview questions that can be tricky but they are seen as ways in which you can show your self-awareness and what you see you can bring to an organization in that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, a lot of nodding heads. So I just want to give you an idea of the team and give you a little bit more about Futureneers and then I promise I'll stop selling and I'll get straight into talking about uh, what we can do for you in that space, okay? So Futureneers is a business that was set up by Kira Kelly. Kira Kelly's up here on the, my right. Yeah, my right, your left. No, my left, your right. Let's say this one, this corner. And um, she set up Cut the Future Nears in 2017. And I came on as an associate at then around 2019 because I believed in what the company was trying to do. And it's grown now to have a number of uh, associates around the UK. We've got some based in America now, and we've also got some based in the, down in Australia because they're all buying into the concept of developing future leader talent um, today. We work with a, uh, we're all Gallup Strengths co uh, coaches, which basically means we use the language of Clifton Strengths, which I'll explain later on in helping people to get into their self awareness in that regard. We are the Irish partner with E2Grow. E2Grow is an app system that allows you to track your progress when you're making goals in terms of your career and nudges you along the way via an app in order to make sure that during uh, workshops that you might attend that you actually um, are still doing the work and staying on track okay so a little bit more so people powered business engine there's four approaches to this from a graduate perspective that we see the first approach is that we have to do a reality check so when we talk about a reality check we're looking to say what is it that you know about yourself here and now in that space right so we will look at it in terms of pre and post surveys and also reflective journals. So if it's in an education space, we're going to be working with colleges to talk through, talk through that and work with the students. And if it's in a workplace program, we're going to be focusing in on that as well. But the really, the nugget that I want to talk to you about is, with, 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 is, is nugget number two, which is around your um, self-awareness. When we talk about self-awareness, does anybody have an idea what that means? Now I can just point and pick on somebody or else somebody can just uh, join in. Go ahead. Self-esteem. Self-esteem is one, yeah. Confidence and so on. Definitely emotional. What else would be there? It's a really good one. Yeah. The soft skills, yeah. And you know what? I kind of great on me when we call them soft skills because they're not soft. They're, they're, they're really, really relevant. So we tend to call them life skills and getting work ready in that space. But that's what we tend to call it. We have to try and change everybody else's perception in that regard as well. 
But yeah, you are looking at your confidence and your leadership skills in that space. And you might be saying to yourself, God, leadership skills. What is it that organizations are actually looking for in the graduate profiles that they're, they're, that they're looking for, which we're going to talk about shortly. We also look at purposeful group work. So if you're in college or you're studying, you tend to be put into teams and groups that you're working with in that space, right? So you know, you're working on a project together. What we do is enable the people in that, in that group to actually have a language in which they can talk to each other coming from a place of strength, which is focusing in on a, on a system of, um, pro, like a personality profile, but you all get a, you get a profile in that regard. And it's all about getting you work, right? Getting you work and life ready. And this is why we have life in, because work is not life and life is not work. It's all blended now and we have to mix it up and we have to enjoy it. And what we're all about is trying to get you to live your best day every day. Now that's not always going to be possible because we do have days that are, you know, pretty crappy. But then we have, we have days that are a little bit better. So when I talk about the reality check, the reality check, as I said, is a pre and post survey and reflective journals. How many people here do any type of journal in our reflections? Yeah, it's always the women. It's always the women that do it. I'd encourage the gents in the room to do it as well if you're not doing it. So the benefit of reflecting is that you're able to assess what you're currently doing and then aim it forward and look at something else that you might need to change. So what is it that you're currently doing in your search for employment? How, is it working? How do you know it's working? And what will you might have to do differently? And we call that our reality check, our assessing the here and now. So when we look at a graduate profile or somebody that's recently graduated from college or is about to graduate, these are the type of things that a, a, a business is work, looking for. Don't worry, it's not copyright. I can see you taking pictures, so that's okay. Um, what, so you can see here, if we look at say, where's the pointer on this, this guy? Yeah, so if we look at applied learning, Okay. How are you bringing about the knowledge that you've made and applying it into your everyday? Okay, because as we all know, you attend a workshop, half of you, if not more, are going to forget everything I said today. So what is the takeaway that you're going to take away that you can work on in that regard? That's your applied learning. Effective communication. Being able to speak to and set, speak to people, but also sell yourself. It's very, very challenging to sell yourself, but you have to look at it as a means in which you are delivering the impact that you're going to give to an organization. They're lucky to have you, not the other way around. So why are they lucky to have you? What are you doing or what do you bring differently to that organization so that they will sign the contract and get you into, into, the, into the job? Self-awareness and confidence here is a big thing that we look at, initiative and ownership problem solving skills, leadership skills, and teamwork. So probably remember if any of you are in college or you recently graduated, the, the teamwork element of projects can be, can be quite difficult sometimes because you might have one member of the group who's working and not pulling their weight, and then you're the, see a few nodding heads there, uh, and then you've got somebody else maybe doing too much or maybe over speaking with people within the group. And you get the, you know, oh God, I wish he'd shut up or I wish he'd shut up in that regard, right? So it's trying to get a blended way in which we can all work better together. So that, if that's what businesses are looking for, you need to be looking at what you're offering. So you need to be showing evidence of what you're doing in all of this to get work and life ready. Okay? Right. I see you all have phones and you all have notebooks. I want you to take a couple of minutes and look at your career reality check. So if you just draw a line down your page and just focus in on, I just want you to take about two or three minutes to think about what are the challenges that you're currently facing in your career now? What are your fears for now and for the future? That's quite internal, so inward focused, okay? Think of this as a SWOT analysis for your career. And then what are your hopes for the future? And also what are the expectations that you have from organizations? This is the bit that we forget. What is it that you want from an organization that you're prepared to work for? Is it that you just want a job or is it that you want a career in which you're gonna be happy? Come on in, take a seat. Come on, there's two seats here. 
<laughs> really, yeah. So just take a couple of moments and say challenges that you're facing internally. Is it that you've got a, you know, a lack of self-esteem uh, self or confidence? The fears that you have in relation to, you know, have you recently qualified? Have you, recently, have you been trying to find work and can't? Your hopes for the future, what would that look like? What is the organisation you might want to work for and why? And what are the expectations that you then have from them? So what is it that you want them to be able to tell you? So the previous speaker talked about this at the very end. You know those tricky interview questions? You know, but if you're going for a job with an organisation and they ask you to do the DL background check on the organisation, because they're doing it on you, but you need to do it on them. So what is it that you're actually, why do you want to work for that organisation? It's very important in that regard, okay? So think about the whole picture before you even start applying for the role. I see a number of jobs out there that are being advertised and I went through them and I scanned them and when I quickly went down to their website I was able to see what they do, what's important to them, what's their vision, why is it important, what's the difference they're making to the future. You know, the future talent, the people that are entering the workplace now. So, in terms of challenges, what are people facing? Do you want to say anything? Lack of experience. Lack of experience. Okay, so, when you have lack of experience, what do you do? Again, this is, co I'm coaching you here, so I'm not giving you the answer. What is it you do to try and gain experience, okay? Now, you might not be able to gain experience in the industry that you're in, but you may be able to gain, what do we call them now? Life skills somewhere else that can be adapted into an organization, okay? So it could be that you might do some volunteering work. Organizations love people who volunteer. Okay, you also get a lot of uh, enjoyment from volunteering. You bring, you know, to, depending on the industry that you're volunteering in, you can bring, a, um, you know, a sense of happiness and a sense of uh, gr gratitude to that organization or to that charity, for example, that you're working in. Okay, what other challenges are we facing? Lack of experience, what else? Visa issues, visa issues for international visa issues. Okay, we'll have to speak to, um, I think, to Tarnish, to Leo Radker on that one, but. Yes, so visa issues. So, visa issues are really, when you think about it, they're kind of the, the challenges and also the fears that tie into that as well. Because if you don't get your visa or you're not allowed to stay or it limits the amount of hours that you can work, you can actually probably, a business might turn around and say, well, why would I employ this guy who can only work 20 hours when I could get a full-time graduate who can work 40 hours? So again, what is it that you can bring that is your unique selling point? Okay? What fears are out there now? What fears do you have about getting, getting work? Anybody? Go ahead. This is a top student, by the way. It's like he's planted in the corner answering all the questions. Go ahead. Uh, doing a job just for the sake of it, just to fill out your CV. Like, yeah. Your... yeah. So, do, so doing a job just for the sake of it. So, you know, for me, I'd be like, oh God, imagine getting up to a job every morning that you're just doing for the sake of it. But you might need to do it in the short term in order to move on to the long term, okay? So always think of what's the, is this step that I'm taking today going to serve me in the future or is it going to ser not serve me? Is it going to make me miserable? Is it a means to an end, okay? We would have all probably had summer jobs in the past. We were doing it to get a holiday. Yeah, so that was the goal. You know, then you went on the holiday and then you left the job, okay? Or else you stayed in the job because you liked it, if you did in the end. So what are your hopes for the future? When I talk about hopes, I talk about what is it you'd like to be, you know, in five years' time? That question is so broad. I don't even know what I'm going to do next year. Never mind in five years' time. But if it's asked of you in an interview, you've got to be able to say, you don't want to push back and go, oh, that's a very lazy question. I refuse to answer it. What's that going to sell to an organization? But they do want you to have taught about it. So what you can say is things like, I can't see five years into the future what it would look like, but for the next year, what I'd love to be doing is developing my skill set in A, B, C, and D. Here's what I've learned so far to date, and this is what I'd like to get back in, in terms of bringing that into the organization. So again, being very confident about building your profile, okay? 
and then expectations. Don't shy away from this. What is it that you want from the organization? You know, what is it that they can give you? It's not just salary. Salary is important. Inflation is going up. We want to earn more money. We want to probably spend more money. Everything's going up, but at the same time, you want to be going into a job or a career that you enjoy as so much as possible. Okay? Uh, this one. Okay, so I talked about high definition awareness. So we've got self awareness and then we've got high definition awareness. This is where you're moving into what we call intention. It's okay to turn around and say, oh, I know that's who I, that's the way I am. Okay, that's an awareness, I, that's who I am, okay? Or I like to do this or I don't like to do this. You have a kind of an understanding about yourself. High definition awareness is when you're kind of supercharging it. So if you say, for example, I get triggered or get annoyed when people talk over me, okay? What we really wanna do is get high definition awareness around what's the root cause of that? Why do you get so annoyed when someone does that? And what way do you behave in that, in, in that situation? So you're trying to, we use what's called a strengths online assessment called Clifton Strengths. It's a 34 um, point uh, profile. And then we use that language of strengths to help have those conversations within the campuses and with students in that regard. Explain a little bit more about that soon. But the reason we do that is that students and people in the workplace will gain awareness about who they are more so so that they can use that language in individual and group sessions learning together. We talked about that applied learning piece. That's the connection there. Okay, so we've all seen probably an iceberg before. And when you look at an iceberg, you probably see in terms of what you offer to an organization or to yourself. Most people see this. They see your skills, whether you've got a good, a good or bad attitude. They look at your performance and then they look at your knowledge. So you, you know, you've, you've, you've a degree or a diploma or a master's in that regard. So they know you have knowledge, but it's more so about what else, what else goes under? What else makes up you as a human being? So just some examples. Okay. Who you are, who do you identify as? What are your beliefs? Do they align, do your beliefs and values align with the organization that you're choosing to work for? And if they don't, are you going towards the right organization? Okay, what's the purpose? What are you here for? What do you want to be saying to yourself in a year's time from now? Looking at your passion and motivation and your strengths, what are you passionate about? Can you find a career in an industry that you're passionate about? Is it better to focus than just apply for a job? It may take longer, but you might be happier in the long run. And that's all about building your self-awareness. So we want you to focus in on your personal brand. Everybody here has a unique selling point. Everybody here is unique in their own special way. And that needs to be celebrated as opposed to just, well, that's just who I am. You offer something and an organization is, is, should be lucky to have you. And I say the word lucky because you have to sell that to that organization, okay? So we look at, I said, the language of strengths and applied learning. So I just want to talk a little bit about who you are. And then we'll be wrapping up shortly and we'll move on to I, giving out a freebie at the end. Everybody likes some freebies, don't they? So we'll, we'll give out a freebie for everybody that's here today. So who are you? So Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, puts this as your personal brand is what people say about you when you leave the room. Now that's powerful. So when you leave a room, are people rolling their eyes up to heaven and saying, God, I'm glad he or she's gone? Or are they saying to the people that are left in the room, I really like Joan or John. They really bring value to the conversation. So how are you showing up every day so that you're living your true authentic self? It's hard, this work is not easy, but this is necessary if you want to, if you want to be happier in your workplace, whatever that is. So how you see yourself is how, when you say things like, I am this person. I am a happy-go-lucky, you know, vibrant, energetic person. Okay, how do others see you? 
Do they see you as overstepping? Too confident, cocky, even worse, that they don't want to be in the room as you. Now that's on them if you are focusing in on your personal brand. Conscious of time, we're okay. Okay, so how you see yourself. I want you to consider the following questions, okay? If you want to take a picture of this slide, you can or you can write them down. What are your strengths, values and your beliefs? So we talk about environmental impact, climate change, all of that. If you, if you are very much a be believe in that and you, you want to be working to, you know, limiting your carbon footprint, it mightn't be right if you go and work for, say, a coal company or a company that's, you know, using fuel or resources in that regard, unless they're doing it in a sustainable way. So you need to think about that when you're trying to align your values and beliefs up to what you want to do. And that's just one example. So what's your USP? Unique selling point. This is a marketing term, but you are your own brand. So what is the brand that you're showing up to every day and how are you promoting and selling that brand to everybody that you meet? What value do you bring? So just consider those questions and then look at who are your others or your stakeholders? A great way of really understanding who you are is to ask your friends or your family. Go home and ask them, what do you, what do you think of me? Right? And see what answers you get back. Because they'll usually be very blunt and honest about it. But at the same time, it can be a great lens in which to build your self-awareness and move forward in a way that you have more information with. So what do they say about you? Helpful and unhelpful. Okay? Some of it may be their experience of you in one situation. And we're all growing all the time. So just because you sold your brother or sister's toys years ago, doesn't mean you're a thief today. Yeah? But it's again, it's just looking at it from that lens. And how do you commu commu communicate your value to your stakeholders? This is massive. Your LinkedIn profile, your Instagram, your Facebook, everything like that is, being, is, is communicating who you are to the outside world. Make sure what you're promoting online is what people see when they meet you. It needs to be consistent, okay? So be mindful of what you're posting. Be mindful of being your true authentic self so that when you maybe are challenged on your beliefs or, your, or, or something like that, you are able to go, no, well, that's what I believe in and here's the reasons why, okay? But be mindful of what you're putting out there because everybody's watching. When you're going for a job, believe me, I worked in HR for 20 years. We're already online researching who you are. Okay? So if we're on there looking and you're telling us in your CV, for example, that you have excellent attention to detail and there's a spelling mistake on your LinkedIn. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing sometimes because we could have you could have a neurodivergency, which could, should be celebrated in that regard. But at the same time, your profile that you're sending out may not necessarily reflect that. So, you know, celebrate your unique selling points. So power in your career, what steps are you taking? And I want you to consider, are you in the driving seat? Or are you in victim mode? I can't get a job. I've come to the careers fair today and I can't find anything that suits me. So switch I can't to I can and focus in in that regard. Now, the freebie. So if you all go onto your phones and click into Eventbrite or on LinkedIn and follow Futureneers, the event I'm hoping has gone live since half two. And there's a Finding Your Power and Edge complimentary session for everybody to attend on the 29th of June. If you want to attend, just sign up on Eventbrite with your login details and um, we'll see you at that session, which will be an hour session where we'll just go a little bit deeper on what we talked about today. A little bit more depth and a little bit more understanding in that regard. Okay?
So I look forward to seeing you there. If you've got any questions, that's me in the middle. This is Kristen on the right hand side and this is Kira on the right hand side. So if you want to take some details there, you can. Or just follow us on LinkedIn. I promise to reply. Any questions? Um, we have a few questions here. Yeah, okay. Um, I suppose in terms of confidence, when you're asked, how can they become confident? How can they approach, you know, the summer or indeed their uh, career search on confidence when they lack some of the hard skills needed, even though they have the degree, but they don't have the, you know, the skills to go with it that they feel, or they don't have the confidence to maybe articulate that to potentially Yeah, I love that question because um, it's a very real challenge. Confidence is an internal feeling that most people would have. So some people can be super confident and they just are naturally confident, but they could be sweating on the outside or on the inside and you wouldn't even know. So when you're looking at confidence, you need to look at what is it that's making you, I suppose, not confident and how can you address the confidence issue first? Because it's practice. It's sitting down in front of a friend and saying, I have an interview, I have a job that I want to apply for, I want to be able to sell myself in the best possible way. And you've got to put in that work and get really clear around that what that is. There's the age I was saying, like fake it till you make it in terms of practice, practice, practice. But but getting confident in that regard is one of the it's one of the better ways of becoming confident. You just get out and do it and get out of your own head. I think there's a big one. Okay. Are there maybe three soft skills you would maybe recommend? people here brushing up on over the course of summer for our future job applications. I mean, soft skills being such a big... Yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to say, we're going to say life skills, okay? So life skills rather than soft skills. And yes, definitely. What I would say is the most important one is yourself, okay? So self-awareness, high definition awareness around who you are and what you bring and really getting deep in, getting to know yourself more. Like, who are you? Do you know? Spend that time on yourself because then you're going to be more confident going into an interview situation or going into a job where you haven't maybe necessarily been able to answer that in the past as well. So there's a, I would say self-awareness in terms of all of that. One of the other things I'd say it's definitely, um, and I promote this a lot, it's more so, I know it's, it's probably like a bro 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 broken record, but when I think of all of the benefit that most people I know in you know, this, this industry, for example, in terms of HR people that are hiring, one of the biggest selling points that anybody will always say is volunteering. What, have you volunteered and what can you do? Volunteering is a way you can do three hours a week. You might do over the summer, you might say, right, I'm gonna volunteer for say AWARE. That's a charity that I volunteer for and I still do. And I learned so much in volunteering from a soft skills or life skills perspective because what you do is you get to see the world from another person's perspective. That gives you empathy, it gives you compassion, and it gives you the opportunity to be able to see people as human beings as opposed to human doings. Okay. Yeah? Thanks very much, Michael. Um, and a lot of people here obviously have experience with teams, uh, work within teams, and a few questions here about, you know, uh, the balance between leading uh, in a team or, or yeah. controlling a team. Love it. Or how to deal with jealousy within a team. Yeah, yeah. So that's a few kind of hand grenades are together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what I would say about um, working with a team, what we, f so I have to look at it from the lens in which I see, see the world. So when we work with teams, we need to all be on the same level of language, I suppose, so that we can approach and have difficult conversations or meaningful conversations. If you're gossiping within your group, they, there's an age old saying about being clear is kind. Be clear to the person about what you're seeing as their behavior. Don't have that conversation with someone else in the team when the other person has left the room. You have to be able to manage and have meaningful conversations in life and in work in that regard. So that was one grenade I dodged. What's the other one? Uh, well, the teams. Yeah, in terms of dealing, dealing with A difficult, jealousy. Oh, jealousy, yeah. Okay. I don't want to throw a grenade back. Are you jealous of the person or are they jealous of you? Jealousy is a very strong word. So we need to get, I would say, find a common denominator in which you can have a conversation that's going to move the situation forward. 
Yes, it's very difficult to do that sometimes, but what's worse is that that will just foster an environment where that will get worse and worse and worse, i.e. the jealousy. So approach it and say, first of all, from a point of view of your own self-awareness, is it that I'm jealous or is that other person, is that person jealous? What am I seeing? What's the reality here? Because emotions are strong. So, so get a checklist out and go, okay, so what's the, what's the behavior? And we use this term called rules of engagement. So when you're focusing on group or teamwork, agree the behaviors that are a principle to what they are and what they're not. So if you demonstrate a behavior that's not appropriate to the group, you're able to say, look, let's go back to our rules of engagement, which we've all agreed on at the start of working together and use that as a compass or a navigating tool. Okay, uh, final question I have here. I'll read this. Uh, I can empathize with people, but I just don't want to sometimes. <laughs> Does that impact my leadership potential and how I suppose love being there? I love that. <laughs> yeah, okay. So again, empathy is putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Compassion is when you take a step back and say, I understand you, I hear you, let's work together to try and sort this out or to try and resolve this. So not wanting to is okay sometimes, but if the role in which you're applying for is a role that involves teamwork, you may have to. So you've got to find the balance in that regard that's going to serve that conversation, okay? okay. Thanks very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank Thanks you. very much, everybody.